You're very welcome back. Now, the Bialtana Festival returns this May with a month-long calendar of events that celebrate the arts and creativity as we age. Joining us with all the details are Kira McKinney, who's Manager of Active Citizenship and Lifelong Learning, alongside author Jennifer Johnson, whose book Naming the Stars was chosen as the book for the Bialtana Festival Book Club. Good morning, guys. Thank you for coming Thank in. Thank you. Morning. Thank you. Kieran, you Good might morning. give us a brief rundown of the festival in sure. terms of its history and what's involved, because you managed the festival for I, a number of I, years. I did, and so Bialtana is the largest cooperative festival in the country. It takes place in every single town and village. It lasts for the whole month of May, and last year there was about 100,000 people took part. So it really taps into something, which is that engaging in the arts is life-enhancing, that we can be creative at any stage in our lives and that we can take part in the arts either by doing and making or by, you know, by being in the audience as well. And it covers every single art form. It's, it's uh, multi-generational. So we have a wonderful project with the Dublin Dance Festival, which is where children and their grandparents will be uh, engaging in dance Lovely. and creativity. We have, and then at the other end of the spectrum, we have Everybody Sings, which is a mm, performance piece about sex and intimacy in older age. And people forget that we, you know, we continue having an interest in sex as we get older, you know, but it's, it's quite a taboo subject. Mm -hmm. And as well as that, we have a number of theatre tours that will be touring the country. So, like, it's such a big festival, what I'd suggest is go onto the website, which is bialtana.ie, and you'll get to see all of the details. And for anybody in Dublin, we also have a really wonderful new edition, which is Bialtana at Temple Bar. And that's a five-day sub-festival in, in partnership with Temple Bar. And what's happening in Temple Bar? What's, what's, what's new? What's, why is this new edition being brought to the festival? Uh, well, I think it, that's down to Tara mm. Byrne, the manager. Mm. So she's managed to you know, generate a whole new partnership right. with all of, the, uh, all of the, the cultural institutions in Temple Bar. The theme of the festival this year is Be Our Guest. And so all of these other institutions have agreed to take part. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Jennifer, you, yeah. you have, uh, or there is a special focus in the Bialtana Festival, and it is, of course, <clears throat> on your novel, Naming the Stars, which we were chatting about during the break, is your 19th novel. It is which indeed. Is ridiculously <laughs> impressive. So, congratulations Not on that. <laughs> I'm guessing this lady's going to correct both of us throughout this interview. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We'll brace ourselves for that. Um, tell us about the novel, Naming the Stars. Well, when, when I started to write it, I had in my mind that I was going to tie up some strange thing that was in all the other novels, but n it never sort of came near. And, and you didn't necessarily realise, uh, if you were a reader of my novels, that they all sort of tie up with each other. And I thought that this novel was going to um, create that... Uh, I don't know, a little sort of post that was there and mm. um, it was going to be useful in that way because, because my, my books have always seemed to be sort of darting around the place. But this is, this is the middle, the nub. Okay. And, uh, but I think it didn't work. <laughs> and it, it, it said to me as I was nearing what I thought was going to be the end, this book is now finished, it's ending. Okay. And so I um, finished it off, and it's very short, and my, my publisher was a little cross with me for doing that. Right. <laughs> and therefore have not given it the attention that I personally feel it ought to have been given. But then all writers say that, so where are you, you know? I was asking you earlier on, Jennifer, before we came on air about, because I'm fascinated with the writing process mm. and writers' processes, and going back to your first book in 1972 to, to this current book, mm. has the writing process changed for you in terms of do you start with a seed of an idea? Are you very regimented in your writing? Is it very procedural? Has the writing process changed? The writing process hasn't really changed. And I have occasionally tried to change it because I thought, well, let's see what we, would happen if we did this. You know, But in fact... It has gone back to the same old thing, you know. I am, I am a part of a whole, mm. and this short book is actually just telling that to people. But I don't think they're going to get it either, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, gloomy uh, about the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> and is book number twenty in the works? No, because book number twenty is waiting by the side, uh, waiting okay. in the wings. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, 
And for 19 to leave the stage, yeah. so that can... Okay. Yeah. Kieran, how yeah. will the book be celebrated as part of this festival? How does it play out? Well, so it's, it's, it's the, the book of the festival, so uh, the hope is that a, an awful lot of book clubs will, will take the book as a starting point, um, read it, engage with it. Uh, it might even be the beginnings for some people of setting up their own book club. Mm -hmm. um, and just as, you know, we set up a Bialtana writers group, uh, I think, 19 years ago, and they are still meeting, mm -hmm. you know? So, so it's also... The, the, the festival is also part of uh, encouraging people to to really develop their own creativity also. As you said earlier on, Kieran, and I think it's so right that, that the arts can come to you late in life. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you don't have to have started yeah. in your, your teens or your 20s or your 30s. You can paint, write. That's a really important point because a lot of people will only have time uh, when, when they retire. Uh, indeed. And yes. they don't necessarily yeah. have to be, yeah. you know, really hardcore yeah. theatre goers yeah. to take yeah. it all up yeah. and yeah. appreciate the yeah. world of theatre and the arts. I'd be interested in knowing how are the... Um, do men read as much as women? As women, mm. OK. Uh, I know they write much more, mm -hmm. but I wonder, do they read? Because uh, when you go to those book, book club yeah. Uh, readings or whatever they may be, yes. they're usually very, very few men up yeah. there. Yeah. And it's I'm an interesting one because I think I think I think with the introduction of Kindles and that I think men I think w they are reading more. Yeah. But they're reading but as a you lot. say, Jennifer, the book clubs seem to be populated by women. Sure. And the women they do wonderful cooking when they're doing their book clubs. <laughs> yeah, it's a great excuse. <laughs> yeah. They do wonderful <laughs> drinking of wine as well. At <laughs> oh, least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm only yeah. hearing rumours, obviously. Uh, yeah, of but... course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this yeah. is the very best look with the festival. Oh, thank we you hope very it much. goes well, Jennifer. Thank you for coming in and joining thank us. You, thank, thank you, Kieran. Thank you, Jennifer, and thank continued you. success. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Now, Thanks. still to come on Saturday AM, one of the biggest selling authors on the planet, David Baldacci, is in the house as well. Plus, we're making a firecracker chicken goujons. My God, in the kitchen, <laughs> and sampling some of the trendiest new gins on the market. Did you just go to a trans? Happy Saturday, there? yeah. <laughs> See you in a few. <laughs>